Hey guys, I want to do a video on some of the brand names that have come out in the last decade or so. And if you've never heard of some of these brands, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. But if you haven't, I believe some of these brands are going to be household names in the very near future, if not already. So I thought I would do this video real quick, touching on a few of them so you know who they are, where they come from, and all that good stuff. Let me first say, though, before I dive into them, that if I say something that's inaccurate on this video, in some cases, I'm just regurgitating information that's been given to me by these companies directly. And again, if I'm saying something that's inaccurate or proves to be inaccurate in the future, then that's just because they told me wrong. Um, so let's go through this. The first one is Residio. If you've never heard of Residio, it's basically, as I've been told, it's Honeywell repackaged another way. And so years ago, Honeywell started getting into the same game that all these other folks are, and that is they already had a good footprint when it came to selling to guys like me, selling to companies, selling to heating and air contractors who are going to use their parts to install them into homes and they would sell them to the contractors who would then sell them to customers, right? So whether we're talking about thermostats or gas valves or control boards or whatever, whatever those parts were, Honeywell was filling that need. As time went on, some of these other residential type consumer, direct-to-consumer brands started coming out, uh, you know, Nest and Ecobee and all these different brands that sell thermostats and hardware stores and big box stores, and Honeywell got into that game too. In fact, I would dare argue that they had a pretty big footprint in that as well. And I can tell you that, you know, aside from this other, I can tell you that there was a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a struggle there. Uh, not just with my company, but with a lot of companies, there were times when customers were being able to go into, say, Lowe's or Home Depot and buy a thermostat. And we were being told that, well, you know, you're getting a better thermostat when we sell it to you. Uh, in some cases, they cost more to just sell them to us. I'm probably guilty of at one time telling customers, oh yeah, just go ahead and get that thermostat from Lowe's and I'll put it in for you, right? Uh, years ago. But then as time went on, they started coming out with, okay, well, this will be the RTH, whereas this is just the TH model. And so one would be the residential, they would sell direct to consumer, and then the other one they would sell directly to the contractors, and they said they would be a little bit better, they would have a few more features and things like that. But essentially, we're still all talking about the same stuff, right? Uh, you know, a Honeywell 6000 was a Honeywell 6000. It looked the same, whether the features were 100% the same or not. Well, I was told by a Honeywell slash Residio rep that that is what made Residio born. And so they wanted to have a definitive line between their commercial or direct-to-contractor type products and their direct-to-consumer products. And so Residio was born. I've been told the whole idea is that Residio is what they're using to basically market direct-to-consumers type of deal. Now, what does that mean for the future? Are the products going to be so totally different between them or whatever? I have no idea. It's very possible that they'll all be become Residio, whether they're selling to me or the homeowner or whatever. But you still see during the making of this video, a lot of brand integration. So if you buy a Residio product or a Honeywell product, they'll work together or you'll see the packaging is still sort of crossing over and things like that. It remains to be seen if that will change. The next company I wanted to talk about is Daikin. If you've never heard of Daikin, they're the largest manufacturer of heating and air products in the United States when you can encompass all of the brands that they make compared to a lot of the other companies. And they're also, during the making of this video, the largest HVAC manufacturer in the world. We'll get to the top supplier and exporter in the world in just a moment. So, but as I've been told, Daikin is the largest manufacturer brand in the world. And so here in the US, they own the Goodman and Amana brands. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that Daikin is one of my favorite brands for a number of reasons. And I'm not necessarily saying they're the best at everything, but they have some pretty cool proprietary technology that no one else offers. And if you don't know what that is, definitely check out one of my videos that I did recently on Daikin. The next brand is RunTrue. RunTrue is a brand that I believe didn't even exist just a handful of years ago. And so RunTrue is owned by Train, and they basically came out with RunTrue, I've been told, 
to combat with some of the other builder grade brands on the market. So you would actually know a definitive difference between you know train and American Standard and now Run True to be able to compete with some of these other brands. Uh, I think there for a while, a lot of these brands were coming out and they were saying, well, you know, we're builder grade, but we're as much good a quality as say a train or carrier, Linux, Dyke, and all the premium brands, right? And train, they basically want to come out with their product line to try to capture some of those folks that are just looking for the least expensive option. And they don't necessarily care about what else you're bringing to the table. They just want something that works. And how much does it cost? I've heard mixed reviews. I've heard some folks say that Run True is amazing, that they still have the spine fin coil that Train and American Standard are famous for, and that they love them. I've talked to a few other folks that have said, eh, they're not necessarily in love with it, that they will only sell, you know, the premium stuff. And then finally, we talked about Daikin being the largest manufacturer in the world. And now the last brand I wanted to touch on was a brand called Gree. And in America, although GRI has been around for several years, I've known about them for over a decade for sure. They're made in China. During the making of this video, they are the largest HVAC supplier and exporter worldwide. The reason I'm so sure that I've heard of them for a while is I believe they were one of the first brands that I was aware of that homeowners could just walk into any store that sold GRI and be able to buy it off the shelf. I know Home Depot for a number of years has sold GRI and you can just order it right from their website. Good or bad, uh, you know, I've done videos on how I feel about buying heating and air equipment online, but that's neither here nor there for this video. Uh, when it comes to GRI, if you never heard of them, I think as time goes on, you're going to hear more and more of them. So anyway, if you watch this video, if you have any brands that you are just now finding out about, please put them in the comment section below. You know, when it comes to brands, there are hundreds, if not thousands of brands now. Uh, you know, for the longest time, when it came to the USA, you know, we probably had about, you know, six, seven manufacturers and then pr maybe a hundred brands. But now with all these brands making all these ductless systems that you can, you know, ship in from China and all this stuff. I mean, we're, we're talking thousands of brands now out there. I've done videos on how to find a good brand, especially when it comes to ductless systems. All that said, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.